Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of the On the Pony Express podcast. I'm Billy Embody. Thanks for listening on this Friday as we preview SMU versus Charlotte. A um, couple quick closing thoughts as non-conference play ends for me. This is a tough schedule that SMU got with Oklahoma and TCU on it. They took care of business at home against two inferior opponents in Louisiana Tech and Prairie View A&M. But I think for SMU fans, the the thing that stands out about this non-conference schedule and how, how frustrating it is, is they, they had opportunities to steal one of the two games that they played on the road against power conference opponents. And I think what is even more frustrating is SMU did not at all play well against TCU in terms of the little things that they executed rather well on the road at Oklahoma. Look, you turn the ball over with a fumble from Jalen Knighton. He was trying to do too much. Yeah, that's a guy trying to make a play is what it is. It hurt you big time in that game. Punt blocked. Inexcusable. Guy ran free. But they, it was so early in the game that it didn't affect, in a, like it didn't, it didn't take the wind out of the sails so much that wow, SMU is never going to recover from that. O, OU capitalized and scored against TCU. SMU came out, drove right down the field, got a stop on defense, did those things. But it just felt like throughout the game that TCU was in complete and total control of that football game for the most part. Um, you you had field goals when you needed touchdowns. The defense was able to hold the TCU offense to field goals when they needed to and, keep, and kept SMU in the game. But Chandler Morris was able to break tackles and, and evade the rush, make big throws on third and longs. Imani Bailey ran wild in the second half. It just – Whatever TCU was doing at times, it felt like SMU was not able to to ha- to handle it well enough to keep themselves in the ball game, which is frustrating. Like three timeouts for whatever reasons, and even if you got things cleaned up in those timeouts so early in the game, inexcusable. Um, there there were just moments where I felt like SMU just wasn't playing up to the way they played at Oklahoma. And in a rivalry game, I I think when I kind of compare the two, that was kind of disheartening because I felt like SMU was ready to play. I didn't think they were they were playing as well as they could and have throughout the first three games of conference play. Because when we would look back at this non-conference slate, you kind of said, okay, OU coming off a very average season. They're going to be improved. SMU is improved. They're going to have an opportunity to win it, but it's kind of like it's Oklahoma. Okay. Second game of the Preston Stone era, you kind of expect what honestly kind of happened in a way. I thought there were going to be maybe more points, but SMU's defense has shown through the first four games they are improved. Tackling is still an issue whenever you're playing defense and you're playing at a decent level like SMU's defense is when you don't tackle because they've been in position so much that's where what's the issue with SMU's defense right now well they're much improved and especially statistically they are but they still aren't tackling as well as they can or should be tackling and they haven't forced any turnovers when it when it's counted and look OUTCU very good teams but they haven't forced those turnovers uh, when they needed them. On offense, they have not just put enough points on the board. It's it's point blank, so to speak. Uh, and that, as much as we talked about the offense being able to move, you know, 25s to, to the 25s, they just haven't finished drives well. And it, and it was kind of the same thing last year at different points in, in the non-conference, uh, you know, uh, schedule. And then they kind of exploded once they overcame their their slow start against TCU. And then they kind of got back on that track against UCF where they didn't finish in the red zone. 
this offense right now is it needs it almost it needs a big deep breath and to reset because maybe there's so much pressure on him because they did bring in so many skill guys. They do have so much depth at running back. They have an offensive line that's playing pretty well, especially coming off the TCU game. Preston Stone has so much pressure on him being this SMU legacy that's been waiting his turn and all those things. They just need to find a way to relax and go play football. They're not getting open enough uh, at the receiver position. They're not taking advantage of plays that are called that are set up rather well. Preston Stone skipping those passes to, to RJ Maryland and Jalen Knighton in the screen game in the short passing game. And then when they do make big plays, at times it's it's kind of like, well, where was that earlier? You know, they missed opportunities here and there. So I think this is one of those things where we look back on the non-conference slate and SMU is just a tick away. They're a tick away from being able to be a productive offense when it comes to actual points per game you know SMU I think right now in total offense sitting in the top 30 uh, I could be wrong on that I'll, I'll try to look it up and check um, but they're not they're not capitalizing with with points on the board and and that is really the tough part yeah they're right inside the top 30 so they're not a bad offensive team but they are not capitalizing and putting points on the board, which is really what it's all about at the end of the day. So their numbers, points per game wise, a little inflated, especially after that Prairie View A and M game. But when it comes down to it, when they get into conference play, we're going to find out who the real SMU team is, because I know that what SMU is against very good opponents right now is that they're a solid defensive team that can't score points. I mean, you score 20, 20, uh, 28 combined points against your two power five opponents. I, it's not good enough. It's under 15 points a game. And they're not, they're, they're able to move the ball and not even relying on any big plays, really, in a, in a way. Like they, they've been able to move the ball by running the football, by getting that intermediate passing game with like a Jake Bailey involved against OU. Against uh, TCU, they got Moochie Dixon the ball. They got Jordan Hudson the ball. They ran the ball really well in the first half in particular. They've done it by piecing together drives. And so that's the frustrating thing is that SMU's kind of, they're a top 30 in total offense team, despite the fact that they aren't hitting as many big plays as they probably should. And they aren't scoring touchdowns. When it, when it matters, like really when it matters. So I think for me right now, this is where the Charlotte game is is obviously a perfectly timed game. This is a Charlotte team that can't put up big numbers offensively. They just haven't all season. Um, when I look at their their schedule, they only scored they, – they scored a season-high 25 points against Georgia State. The rest of the games, they've scored in the 20s, or they've only managed a touchdown, which came last week against Florida. Defensively, they're kind of a mixed bag. You know, they they played a bad SC State team in terms of, you know, level of competition difference, and then they were able to hold, you know, Maryland for a bit, and then they exploded, scored 38, Georgia State 41, Florida 22. It's one of those things where which Maryland or which uh, Charlotte defense is SMU going to get, and th that'll determine if SMU can maybe explode for some touchdowns and you know get on the right side of this thing. I mean Louisiana Tech, you know they've they've had their battles, but they've been able to put up some points, um, and SMU was able to hold them in complete check. So I think Charlotte is going to be a team that, despite having two quarterbacks, despite having an ability to pick things up, you know, in the run game. Uh, Jalen Jones, their quarterback, leads the team in rushing. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Um, with with, uh, let me see. Uh, I had it right here for a minute. Um, uh, he's been um, uh, he's been able to pick up yards on the ground. Um, he leads the team with 261 yards, and that's 65 yards a game and three touchdowns. So it it's 
you're going to have to defend that. We saw what Chandler Morris was able to do when he got out and broke plays um, and things like that. But this is not a Charlotte offense that should be scoring, you know, drive for drive with SMU. This is a Charlotte offense that has struggled throughout, you know, the entire year. They just do some things and they have some players that make things difficult on you at times. Um, but when it comes down to it, they're not they're not putting up points. So for me, I mean, if you're SMU's offense, you should be looking at this and say, well, we can eventually, we can do what Maryland did. We can do what Georgia State did and break out and get 35 plus points on this team. And they need to. They need to get a big boost of confidence going into the bye week. SMU is favored in this one by about 24 points. Uh, they're going to have to find a way here to finish touch, finish drives with touchdowns. And I know it's just repetitive, but that's where this team is right now. You need to go back to the basics in practice and find ways to, you know, manufacture good looks at drive finishing plays. And it's, I don't know, kind of as we look at the non-conference as a whole, I think there are some things that we've seen cleaned up by SMU in play calling. I like the fact that they didn't run reverses and jet sweeps and all those things against TCU. And guess what? Those things that, you know, they've kind of talked about as being, well, those are what they have to prepare for. They have to um, do this. They have to do that. That's all well and good. But those plays didn't impact SMU's ability to run. They were able to really run the ball very well against TCU. They didn't have to do any of this window dressing and things like that. So I like what they cleaned up there. I think there are some situational things that SMU has to get cleaned up. And here's the thing. SMU sitting in the top 30 off of total offense right now. They, and you can say that number might be inflated by the Prairie View A&M game. Sure. But there's a lot of teams around the country that have had a game like that or similar results that are maybe inflating their offensive numbers overall. When you look at what SMU has issues with, it's situational and it's red zone. It's third and short. And they have got to get those things cleaned up. You know, if people want to harp on play calling and and there are times where, look, when you just gave up a, a long drive to TCU to open the second half, it needs there has to be a way to get more than 34 seconds off the off the game clock. I mean, run a screen, run, run anything, even if you see a certain look and you're saying, wow, we got to take a shot, you can't, you can't just have 34 seconds come off the clock. And then your defense get thrown back out there after a long four and a half minute, five minute drive. That that just can't happen. So there are some situational things that SMU as a staff, SMU as an offense, uh, and their and their players have to get better at. You know, if, if Preston Stone's supposed to read it and hand the ball off to Tyler Levine, and that's what the read says, that's got to happen. You know that that's there's nothing Rhett Lashley can do pre-play, during play, post-play, that can that changes that read. So those are all things that SMU has to figure out. And they they need to do it quickly. And and that's because Charlotte does have a defensive front that will put a little bit of pressure on SMU in terms of forcing them to block things up very well in the run game. They've got some big defensive linemen in that group. They're going to have the athleticism to get some pressure on Preston Stone potentially. That that's a big piece here. I thought SMU's offensive line without Justin Osborne for the most part played unreal football against TCU. They gave Preston Stone all day to throw. But each week's a new week. You know, we saw Oklahoma find ways to get some pressure. SMU didn't run the ball as well against OU and it's two very different schemes, but SMU was able to figure it out for TCU a much more talented opponent top to bottom compared to Charlotte. Um, and so that's encouraging. I think this is going to be a good test for SMU's leadership. I think it's going to be a good test for all of the things that SMU has in place to be very successful in AAC play. They are going to have to put them on display this week. They're coming off a, a tough emotional loss. It wasn't like it was a heartbreaker, 
but it was a game where you did not play well in a rivalry game. A lot of different things happened in that game. What you're going to have to rely on is your defense to come out and play steady football. And your offense is going to have to finish drives. And if they do that, this should be a game where SMU hits the spread and covers. Uh, it is a 23 and a half from what I saw point spread in this game. And Charlotte just hasn't been able to keep pace offensively with anyone. And so if SMU moves the ball like they have, they should be able to do what they want for the most part in this game and pull away. Unless we see a true regression from the defense, which could very well be missing a Brandon Crosley, we'll see. Uh, he was injured this week at practice. Rhett Lashley called him questionable. You know, that shouldn't make too much of a difference. They've got their defensive linemen uh, healthy, ready to go. They've got their linebackers healthy, ready to go. They've got a bunch of guys in the secondary that can help help out. So when SME takes on Charlotte this weekend, I, I think the Mustangs are going to win something like 38-10, 38-13. I just think this offense for Charlotte has just not done enough for me to say that they're going to do much of anything against an SMU defense that is sitting there uh, pretty strong uh, in the NCAA total total defense rankings. Um, and so that's that's where um, I think they're going to be able to shut them down. SMU ranking 35th overall in total defense, a really good jump up there. Uh, they're one of the better red zone defenses uh, that – out of the entire conference. I think SMU ranks actually top three in a bunch of different defensive categories uh, right now um, when it does come to um, defense. Uh, we're talking about red zone uh, defense and and all of those things, total defense, points per game. Um, and, and so SMU's defense is, is probably their calling card at this stage of the, of the season. And we knew that going in, they'd be improved. Um, I didn't, see it being like this stark of a contrast between the offense and the defense. But yeah, SMU ranks in the top three defensively, uh, including defensive touchdowns, which, you know, they, they're second. They have a block field goal return for a touchdown in it, and Corey Roberson's interception return for a touchdown. First down defense, uh, their third. Passing yards allowed, third. Red zone defense, first. Scoring defense, third. Team sacks, second. Tackles for loss, first. Team sacks, uh, their second and then total defense second. They had it twice in there in the preview. So shout out SMU there. But um, SMU has to get through this game and you rely on some of these games with your defense. You know, that's usually if you're going to be off, your defense needs to be on and step up and, and let the offense shake the cobwebs. I don't know if they're going to be cobwebs from that loss. I think this is a very mature SMU team. And I, like I said, I think SMU wins about 38-13, something like that, um, and takes care of business at home. SMU's played very well at home. Um, and they've been able to control both games that they played. Obviously, Prairie View A&M is, is, is a you know, different level of competition. But Louisiana Tech, that's SMU's um, – that, that's Louisiana Tech's most uh, – you know, decisive loss on their schedule. Um, and they, they played North Texas. They put up a bunch of points that and lost that one. But um, SMU, I, I think they take care of business at home uh, for this one. So uh, we'll see how that goes. But before I get into uh, some uh, recruiting uh, coverage, I do have to remind you guys of our friends at redandwest.com. Uh, be sure to check out what they've got um in store for for mustang fans they've got that uh the western polo the classic look there i was wearing that last week on the podcast um but they also have uh the white the white polo which i'm wearing today uh, this is a really really clean look um with the smu um you know uh, logo there, the new logo that the the school has. So you can check these out. Um, they they are priced really well. Uh, some of the other you know brands out there are going to be in the hundred over a hundred dollars. You do get free shipping when you buy. So this is a brand that started actually in Norman, uh, and they you know started doing this as as OU fans, but they've now expanded uh, into other uh, markets uh, with their with their gear. And I think for me, I love the breathability. It's a retro kind of look uh, to it, but they're all make they're all made for the you know current, um, I guess uh, uh, times, which is breathability being key, 
um, and, and instead of that polyester from the 1980s. Um, so they started back in 2018 making one product for one school. Now they've expanded. SMU launched last week. We told it, told you guys about it um, last week on the podcast. They're a small family-owned business, um, and they're, they get you your stuff really quickly. They get it out the door quick. Um, I think it took two days uh, for me to get this uh, once they put it out uh, into the mail for me. So uh, you can email gameday at redandwest.com. If you have any questions on sizing or orders and all those things, um, but check them out, redandwest.com. They're going to expand with much more, um, uh, you know, uh, apparel in terms of hats and other other things like that. I'm talking to them a good bit about what they can put together for SMU fans in 2024. But they're off to a big start. We appreciate all of you guys who have already ordered. Had a bunch of people on the on the Pony Express message board say that they ordered. And so um, we are uh, excited to partner with them. Redandwest.com, that you know, classic uh, retro kind of polo look is is uh, kind of in the in it's in in style right now. So um, be sure to keep it locked on Redandwest.com for all their updates when it comes to apparel. And if you've got college football fans in the family or friends, they've got some other schools in there too for you guys. So check them out. Redandwest.com. SMU needs to have a clean showing this weekend because they are hosting one of the top prospects in the state of Texas for an official visit. And the Mustangs are hosting Derek McFall out of Tyler High School. The 5'10", 185-pound athlete did commit to UCLA in August. Um, he had offers from all over the place. Uh, a four-star prospect you see there uh, checking in as a nearly a top 10 athlete nationally. And uh, SMU running backs coach Keenan Hall has got him coming in for an official visit this weekend. And look, quite frankly, the Mustangs, now that they're in the ACC, need to uh, get guys like this. You know, I mean, he is one of the top prospects in the state of Texas for a reason. SMU's bringing him in, trying to uh, sway him away from UCLA. Uh, he he did play for California Power, one of the uh, – you know, top seven on seven programs in the country, which is obviously based out of California. Um, he got he got locked in with them and then ended up committing to UCLA in August. But this is a guy that Keenan Hall has kept chipping away on, trying to get him on campus for a visit. Sure enough, uh, with his team on the bye week this week, uh, they will host Derek McFall. Uh, so big news there for SMU getting him on board for a visit. As you get ready for AAC play, be sure to check out our friends at GameTime. GameTime.co or download the GameTime app and check out the fastest growing ticketing app in the country. And with the GameTime guarantee, that means that you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for another price, GameTime will credit you 110% of the difference. And look, with Charlotte SMU, uh, again, you can use the Game Time app with the flash deals uh, to secure the best price inside Ford Stadium this weekend. Uh, you can roll around and see right here. You can click that flash deal instead of $11, $9. Instead of $16, $13. And you can roll through them. They have different options for you guys. Uh, so check those out. They know how to get you the best price uh, for your game tickets, and whether that's game tickets for football, basketball, baseball, or concerts, comedy, theater, and more, this is the best app right now. It's the fastest growing ticketing app in the country and the official ticketing partner of On3 and OnThePonyExpress.com. You can buy those tickets in a matter of seconds. Two taps and you're set. They'll be sent directly to your phone so you never have to dig through your email. So snag tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use promo code PONY for twenty dollars off your first order. That's GameTime.co or download the Game Time app today and use promo code PONY. Terms apply. Create an account, redeem code PONY, twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Last week. Um, we haven't talked on the podcast really since then, but Keelan Russell, uh, the four-star Duncanville quarterback, did commit to SMU. 
Uh, he is a top 100 prospect for on three. He's a, a, a guy that I think other services are probably going to bump at some point. Uh, so his on three industry ranking will only go up. But we have him as the number 81st uh, overall prospect in the country, the seventh best quarterback in the nation. Uh, the state champion who emerged as a starter for Duncanville last year uh, was really down to SMU and Ole Miss and ended up uh, committing to the Mustangs on Thursday night. And this is a massive pickup for SMU when you look at how they prioritize Dallas, how they've wanted to build around uh, a lot of, especially those South Dallas prospects that are really highly touted. Keelan Russell is one of the best. And, and I think the thing that's awesome about Keelan is uh, he is just, I think, scratching the surface. He has one of the best releases I've seen, um, you know, just around the country, just really smooth, really quick. And he's a big kid. And he's going to add some size to himself as he grows older and gets into a college weight room for sure. Again, he's only entering his first full season as a starter. He started last year as a backup for Duncanville and then eventually emerged to bring them in to that state championship game. Uh, obviously, he's got some talent around him as well. Um, but this is a guy that just wanted to stay home. And once SMU got that ACC invite, it paid off in a big way for the Mustangs uh, with his commitment. So a uh, lot of people involved here, Keenan Hall, uh, Ricky Hunley, Johnny Brewer, Brett Lashley. Um, and, and now you can really say that the quarterback room is in a great place long term. You've got Preston Stone. You've got Kevin Henry Jennings. You have Keldrick Luster on campus. Alex Padilla will eventually move on, move on at some point. And then you have uh, Tyler Aronson, the 2024 quarterback commit who will be here in January as well. And Tyler Aronson coming to campus this weekend for the Charlotte game. Got a couple of uh, SMU commits that'll be on campus. Zach Smith, Graham Uter. Uh, those guys will be back on the Hilltop uh, to check out SMU Charlotte. So um, it's going to be a big recruiting weekend. Be sure to subscribe to ontheponyexpress.com for just a dollar uh, for your first month. So we had a bunch of people subscribe over the last really month. Uh, it's a it's been a massive month for on the Pony Express. We've uh, grown by about 150 subscribers since the ACC news, which is just awesome. Uh, so we appreciate all you guys who have subscribed to the website on the Pony Express dot com. Uh, be sure to pick up a subscri subscription, practice coverage, recruiting notes, visitor list, recruit reaction, um, all of those things. I'm getting out to some high school games as well. So we'll see a lot of SMU targets um, over the course of the season. Uh, be sure to get on board. Um, I'm telling you guys, it's, I think it's worth every penny. I'm I'm biased, but it's a dollar for your first month, then just 10 bucks a month after that. So can't really beat it. Um, Dallas Morning News doesn't have anyone right now uh, covering the team full time. So uh, join on theponyexpress.com today and uh, find out why uh, we're growing like crazy and we're the, the biggest and largest uh, SMU community of fans out there. So um, with that, guys, uh, got to run. Going to another high school high school game tonight. Uh, we do have a lot of recruiting coverage to come. We've dropped a bunch of notes throughout this week, so I think almost daily. Um, and I know not today just yet since I'm recording, but we will have some notes on some visitors um, and where things stand as SMU having an official visit weekend to kick off AAC play. So be sure to be locked in on the On the Pony Express board for all that info we appreciate you guys listening to another edition of the podcast and we will catch you guys next time